This is Larry Jordan, the host of the Digital Production Buzz. The following interview is an excerpt from a recent program. To hear the entire program, visit digitalproductionbuzz.com. Jessica Sidimer is a job coach who helps people find work. She's also a regular on the buzz, and she's the president of the Green Light Coach. But what we really like best about Jessica is that she's good at providing helpful career advice. Hello, Jessica. Welcome back. Hello. Thank you for having me. You know, it is nice to finally see your face on the screen. It has been years and years. We hear this wonderful, cheerful voice, and we've never seen you before today. This is a highlight. Mike has written it in his calendar. I'm glasses or not. Yeah, I think you look good in the glasses. <laughs> okay. The gla- oh, wonderful yeah, touch. Jess- Jessica never gets out to L.A. anymore, right? No, she it's doesn't. Been, it's been a while yeah, since yeah. you've been out here. No, she doesn't visit the West Coast. She, yeah, she, doesn't, can't, yeah. she doesn't like either one of us, That's actually. Right. I was there in February. I'll be back in May. Oh, good. Well, then you'll have to stop by and see the new studio. Ah, the new studios are worth seeing. Jessica, we've been talking in the office all day about whether we're busy being busy or whether we're busy doing work. How would you tell the difference? Okay, that's productivity. And it's really important to identify what you're doing. So for a very long time, I've been training my clients to make a list of everything that they do. And now I've taken it a step further. I've been working with my green light elites and I've taken from one of my coaches, Davey Tyberski, he does a graph. So in the first column, it's action. In the second column, it's impact. In the third column, it's ease. And in the fourth column, it's total. So let's say you write down, I go to networking events, social media reach outs, um, online resume submissions, and you write down everything you do. Then you put the impact. So for networking events, that's a 10 on a scale of one to 10, has a strong impact. And ease, it's an eight because I teach you how to network properly. So it becomes more of an ease. So it's an 18. Social media reach outs. You reach out to people. The impact is an eight. So you're starting to you know, create relationships with people. The ease is a nine. It's really easy just to do something on social media. And then your total is 17. But then you look at online submissions. The impact is a one. The ease is a 10. It's really easy to send those out all the time. And it's really only 11. So you want to get this rating system in place for everything you do, whether it's just research or mailings or cold calling, all of the things that you do so you can see, am I busy being busy or is this really having an impact on me? Am I doing the easy things or am I doing the impactful things? And then you put it together and the ones that have the highest score as far as impact plus ease, those are your priorities. Hmm. Can someone who's not a math wizard actually do this? <laughs> if you I do mean, columns. Suddenly, I, I've got, is this, is this too much work? No. I actually, I wish I could um, show you my computer right now because I, I made a, a photo for all of you. you know, tomorrow when this is posted on uh, YouTube, I, I, I'll see if I can upload a picture to YouTube because I made this column it looks, it looks great, and it's so easy to I'll do. Four you, columns. I'll give you a secret. If you email me the photo as soon as you're done talking, we edit uh-huh. the show tonight. It's posted tonight, so we'll include your photo as part of your interview because we have that technical skill right here. We can fix everything in post. Y'all are fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> why, why the focus on efficiency? I mean, Well, because what I have found is that a lot of people, the majority of the people, complain that nothing's working for them. They're really passionate about what they do, but nothing's working. And then I ask them, what have they been doing? And when they answer, they're doing the same three or four things over and over and over again for years and expecting something to be different. And especially the things that aren't showing results. As I said, most of them are online submitting. A lot of them are playing around, fixing up their websites and their reels. And I'm like, well, how much impact is that having? And it's not having a lot. So you have to look at what are the actions that are going to have a strong impact and if I'm struggling with them, where do I get help so I can get better at them so that I'll have impact and ease? My, uh, my sister uh, uh, decided to change careers and went to school, got a uh, medical assistance uh, degree, um, and then had job interviews after job interview after job interview. These are face-to-face 
job interviews, was never getting the job. This went on for like nine months. And uh, finally, uh, uh, it seemed to me that it wasn't how much you know, it was who you know, because the who you know people were getting the jobs, not the how much, not the better qualified. Finally, she ended up getting a job primarily because of who she knew. Well, who you know is definitely going to have a big impact, but there's also a lot that you could do to have an advantage in an interview. And really what people are doing wrong in interviews or they're just answering the questions very stiffly and how they think it needs to be answered instead of sharing stories and having conversations. So the person who's going in for the interview never actually shows up. The interviewee shows up, but the person who this person would be working with on a regular basis, they don't get to know in that short amount of time. But I have strategies for that. Yeah, I was wondering if that was probably one of the reasons, but she's a real people person. But then again, people change when they get into interview situations. It's a much, much different kind of person that you become. So Exactly. I, I was think just, you had to stay you. Yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. One of the things that you've stressed over the years is face-to-face networking is much more important than anything that we do online or anything that we do via our website. Is it? We want to make that personal contact. And it sounds like your system is designed to emphasize the importance of meeting people in a, a non-threatening social environment as opposed to the formality of a job interview. Am I hearing that right. correctly? Absolutely, because if you know them beforehand, then yes, you're going to have the advantage. And that's why I really encourage people to get mentors, have strategy meetings, get referrals to people so they can meet them before there is a job available. And then when the job becomes available, they've already gotten to know you. They have an idea of what your work ethic is and what your personality is. So that's some work that people should always be doing, expanding their contact. There's a a phrase I use in my classes, and I want you to tell me if I should continue using it or if I've gone completely afield, which is it isn't who you know, and it isn't necessarily who knows you. It's who knows what you know. (laughs) Would you agree with that? Who knows what you know? Okay, I get it. Yes. You know why? Because with social media... I might not know you and you might not know me, but if you're following me on social media, you'll know what I know because you're learning that about me. So, yes, uh, you know, it's who you know, it's how well you know them, and and, and I think that's more, you know, how well the person knows you. See, Jessica, Jessica, one of the things that that you may not know is that Mike has a routine that he goes through (laughs) before every show to get himself loosened up for the show. And he spins plates. Yeah, and so he's got these plates yeah. spinning While I'm in the air. Who you it's know, a way how of de stressing. You know, you know, you know, and, it, it, you know, you would never think of Mike being a juggler spinning plates out in the, in the green room as he's waiting to go on. But it works. You would know Mike, and you would know that he's this, this bon vivant and incredible co host, but you wouldn't know him as a juggler unless you had seen him. So it isn't until we know what he knows that Mike actually <laughs> sort of has a personality associated with him. You know you, what I mean? You lost me at juggling. But it was yeah. great. It was a wonderful <laughs> example. The plates I'm just spinning. wondering how many plates he has in the air. <laughs> any, more than, any more than three, and more we're sweeping three, up the yeah. results. <laughs> just like you, Jessica, and more than three. That for their own productivity. You know, another one of my coaches, James Malinchek, once taught me something that I have used and I find so effective, and that is his post-it method. You take a post-it, you write three things down for your work that you're going to do that day. And then once you've accomplished them, you crumple it up and you throw it away. You know, no saving post-its and checking off things. And keep, and it's nice and simple for people. Great idea. You get three things done that are effective, and it's more than most people are doing on a regular basis in our industry. Is that kind of is that like setting goals, only short-time goals rather than long-term goals? Absolutely, and they should all be targeted toward those long-term goals in an effective way. Matter. Always just you know, long-term goals. If you don't achieve that long-term goal, that's just debilitating. So I'm always okay. wondering. First of do- all, the tonality here is just speaking. Mo- is like, those long-term goals. Long-term goals are amazing because that's how you know that you're working for something. How do you know you're not going to achieve them because they're long-term? So you're always working to achieve them, and just the fact that you have your eye focused on something 
things are going to fall into place. You're going to hear things in conversations. You're going to meet people that when you share your goal, they're going to be able to help you. Whereas if you have no goal, then people have no idea what to do with you and, you know, how to help you. Uh, Jessica, Jessica, yeah, Jessica, I'm... what happens if I'm doing all this hard work because I don't want to step outside of my comfort zone? I don't like meeting people <clears throat> or I don't want to go to social events. Mike talks constantly about how hard it is to get people to come to user group meetings. They like hiding inside their room. How do you get past the I'm doing busy work to avoid getting meeting people? Okay, well, the first question you ask is, how is this working for me? And obviously, I can guarantee you that if you're doing busy work to just be busy, to avoid the things that are going to help you get your goals, then you're never going to reach your goals. So it's either time to do something else or it's time to get yourself educated because education and learning is the key to overcoming these fears. Your fear is of the unknown. You don't know what to expect in a networking event, so you imagine the worst case scenario of I don't know what to say or I'm going to be shunned by the clicks or I'm going to be standing all by myself by the wall and no one's going to talk to me instead of what could be. And if you don't know what could be, then you need to learn. There are books, there are home study programs, there are coaches like me. There are always techniques and tools to help you. So if you really want this, you've got to say to yourself, even if I'm stepping out of my comfort zone, like baby steps, like in what about Bob, baby stepping to the elevator, that's okay. I've got my green light elites this month. They're taking action every day. I gave them a booklet so that every day they had one action to do. They were all doable actions, but the progress they were making was amazing. Just because they did that one single action, so which Jessica, is more than they would have been doing. Jessica, we have run out of time, but you have not run out of advice. Right. Where can people go on the web to learn more about all the good advice that you've got? They can go to thegreenlightcoach.com, check out my latest blog for my Matt, my March Madness bundle sale. $1,100 worth of learning for 97 bucks. And months. that's the March. Green Light Hush Up. The greenlightcoach.com. <laughs> Jessica Sidemer is the president of the Green Light Coach. And Jessica, thanks for joining us Thanks, today. Jessica. Bye-bye. Bye.